Hello, everyone, and welcome to Civic Education Series Part 2, Township Government. So my name is Krista Danis. I'm the Events and Program Coordinator at the Aurora Public Library District, and I am joined by my colleagues at the League of Women Voters Aurora area, Denise Elsbury and Debbie Fisher. Thank you so much for partnering on this wonderful project, and thank you to our guest, Brenda, for being here as well. And thank you to everyone for tuning in from home at, on Zoom or Facebook Live. Um, so a couple housekeeping things before we do our intros, I just would like to mention that we have um, closed captioning available. If you're interested to turn it on, you would just navigate to the bottom of your screen and click on live transcript where you can click show subtitles. If they're on and you want them off, you can click hide subtitles. Um, also, this um, event will be recorded, so it will be available for future viewing on the library Facebook page, YouTube, and with the League of Women Voters as well. So uh, without further ado, I will mention, uh, oh, before we move on, chat, so, or uh, questions. So if anyone has questions, we'll take those at the end. Um, and you can submit your questions through the Q&A function if you're on Zoom or through the comment section if you're on Facebook. And we will make sure to answer those questions at the end. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Debbie to introduce our wonderful guest this evening. Thank you very, very much, Krista. And welcome to all of you for our second in our civic education series. We want to especially thank Krista, who is the coordinator for program and events at the Public Library. Without her hard work this evening would not have been possible. The League of Women Voters advocates for changes in legislation, both at the local, state, and national level, which result in civil rights protections. We activate voters through voter registration and voter education, we protect voting rights, and we promote civic engagement. It's the last one that led us to the creation of the Civic Education Series. Our program tonight is on township government, and we are honored to have township board member Brenda Hernandez as our speaker. Brenda was elected to Aurora Township as a trustee in 2017, making her the youngest elected official in Kane County at that time. She has focused on sustainable solutions and engaging the youth to get involved in local government and sports, especially in underserved communities. She is completing her studies at the University of Illinois Chicago with a double major and master's degree in urban studies with emphasis on economics, urban design and sustainability. Welcome, Brenda. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited you guys are doing this event. I think it's so important to get the community um, engaged and educated in what's going on specifically in local governments. Um, I think it's so important to create this like bottom up approach, if, if I may say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share a PowerPoint presentation that's going to discuss um, the township and what it does and what it is. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen. Um, one second. Okay, can everyone see this? Okay, great. So um, Aurora Township um, is located at 80 North Broadway. And I put a picture of the building because many times a lot of people don't know. They see the building, but they don't know exactly what it is. Um, so hopefully that helps. And then, so what is township government? Township government is one of the oldest forms of government in the state of Illinois, um, originating when the first township laws were adapted back in 1874. Uh, in specific, Aurora Township is one of 16 townships in Kane County and one of 1,433 townships in the state of Illinois. While most Aurora Townships is Aurora Township isn't incorporated in the city of Aurora, it also does include parts of North Aurora and Montgomery. We currently serve 150,000 uh, residents, approximately, that reside within our boundaries. 
And now, are you in Aurora Township? The question that many people ask. So uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, there is the border lines. We are Aurora Township unincorporated is a majority in Aurora, but does represent, as I mentioned, parts of Montgomery and North Aurora. Um, Aurora Township unincorporated is majority. Um, so it's like a four by four. Um, the boundaries are two blocks north of Oak Street, Orchard, Eola Road to the east and Route 30 to the south. So that would be uh, the border lines of Aurora Township. And then in fact, the city of Aurora is part of four different townships, which include the Batavia Township, Naperville Township, Oswego Township and Sugar Grove Township. And then we'll move on to who makes up the Aurora Township Board. So the current township board is made up of the township supervisor, the township clerk, the township board of trustees, which are uh, four of them, including myself, and the highway commissioner, as well as the assessor. All of us are all elected to the position. And to start, the supervisor is the township supervisor uh, is a chief executive officer of the township. The supervisor is responsible for chairing meetings, administration of general assistance programs, and serves as a treasurer to the township. So I always like to say that they act as like the mayor of the township. And the township clerk is responsible for maintaining all township records except general assistance case files. The clerk's responsibilities also include all public notices on behalf of the township and is a non-voting member. So they keep track of all of our meeting agendas, our notes, what's going on, and they are responsible for posting that on to our website and making sure that the public gets um, is aware of what's going on. Now, the Township Board of Trustees. So, including myself, there's three other elected, um, and we're all elected at large. Um, we are a legislative arm of the township. We set policy and procedure to the so the township supervisor can administrate. We are not responsible for establishing policies um, for the township that the assessor and the highway um, can address. That is, that's a little bit separate, and I'll get to that. Um, the highway commissioner um, is responsible for construction and maintenance of all roads and bridges within the Aurora Township district lines. Um, and the township assessor researches the market in neighborhoods for real estate, estimating the neighborhood by how the market is currently going. They do not dictate the price. Um, and then if one does not agree with the turnout of um, the appraise or the assessment, um, there is a board of review in the fall that does take place as well as a board of appeals. Um, and one can always contact the office. I also have the information towards the end. They're extremely accessible. And um, our current assessor, Davis Office, is amazing at breaking down information. Um, so Aurora Township functions. So by law, township must perform three basic functions, general assistance to qualifying residents, road and bridge maintenance, and property assessments. For general assistance, it is locally administered welfare program, which provides monthly financial assistance to people who do not have adequate income or resources to provide their own basic needs. To qualify, the individual must meet certain financial and residential criteria and be ineligible for any other state or federal assistance programs. Some qualifications that are required include uh, being a township resident, being 18 years and older, a U.S. citizen, um, and if they don't qualify for um, general assistance, then we do have another program which is called uh, the Emergency Assistance Program, and for that there also is qualifications um, to qualify for this program specifically. The applicant must be 30 days or more behind their rent, have received a five day notice from their landlord and meet specific financial criteria based on house, household size. So you can always, as I mentioned earlier, you can always um, call the township. We also we have someone that oversees um, this specific department, um, and we have a lot more information on the website as well. For road and bridge and property assessments, um, as I mentioned, David's office does an amazing job at breaking that down. 
Additional service that we also provide are with the Youth Center, which is located at 313 Gale Street, Aurora 60506. And we are open Monday through Friday. We officially, we opened um, earlier in the month. Um, we were closed due to COVID um, and taking specific precautions. Um, the Youth Center currently offers free aerobics on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, they are free for seniors. And then we also have indoor soccer practice from 5 to 7, Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays from ages 6 and older. Uh, we currently do have restrictions on how many people can attend, um, but there is still some spots available, so feel free to call if you know anybody. Um, let's see. So we're, we're slowly rolling out programs, but with the restrictions that we have, um, as time progresses, we're opening and making these programs a little more accessible to the public. Um, prior to COVID, we did have a lot of more programs that were implemented for the youth, such as um, a delinquency pro, uh, prevention program, an indoor and outdoor soccer, uh, basketball, tutoring, um, and a variety of other programs. So we also have a senior and senior service programs, which include the lawn mowing and snow removal, as well as transportation services. We currently have a wait list, but seniors 65 and older and disabled residents in Aurora Township do qualify for these services. Um, you can call and also be asked to be put on the wait list. Uh, with Senior Services Inc. is also another program that we partner up with. They have a variety of services and resources for seniors, such as free taxes, case management, elder abuse intervention, Medicare issues, uh, prescription assistance, property tax issues, social security, transportation, and utility assistance. They are a wealth of resources, and I have added their location and their phone number. Um, they also have currently been doing such an amazing job with getting information to seniors in regards to the COVID vaccine. So if you're interested, that is something I would definitely reach out to them or the county for. Um, ride in cane service is another one that we have. Ride in cane is a public transportation service providing curb to curb bus or taxi service for seniors 65 and older, disabled individuals and those with low income who qualify for service in King County. Who are, um, we are currently co-sponsored, uh, sponsors and provide um, riding cane transportation service. Under this program, el eligible residents are offered subsidized transportation that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, which is pretty awesome. Our services are limited to the King County and DuPage County section of the city of Aurora. So we do have boundaries that um, we don't go all the way or extend to, but you can always call um, if you know someone that has to go um, to dialysis or has a doctor's appointment or needs um, this service. This is really great. Um, the people that are eligible are 65 um, age or older. Aurora Township resident, um, and you can register through the Aurora Township website or by calling at, at the office, the number that I have on the screen. Um, and then rides can be scheduled by calling the center seven days in advance. Uh, the cost is a $5 one way for the first 10 miles and then $1.50 per additional mile. So the fare depends on the distance you travel. So code enforcement, um, if you are a resident of the unincorporated areas of Aurora Township, some property maintenance violations will be handled by Aurora Township, such as tall weeds and grass, um, dumping garbage around property, uh, inoperable vehicles. You can call and make a complaint and the code enforcement officer will enforce the ordinances that we have um, as long as it falls under the Aurora Township lines. Otherwise, King County Sheriff's Department is another option. Um, another thing that people don't know is that Aurora Township residents, um, APD, the Aurora Police Department, doesn't necessarily fall under their jurisdiction. It, it would be the King County Sheriff's Department that does. 
Um, and then Aurora Township Community Development Assistant Program, the CDAP loans, which is a loan fund which is designed to help companies expand in or relocate into Aurora Township. This serves as an economic development loan to help create and build jobs to Aurora Township. The funds are typically used for loans to companies locating or expanding um, to acquire land buildings and equipment. And finally, so we have a township cemetery, which a lot of people do not know, but Aurora Township owns and maintains a cemetery near the intersection of Montgomery and Douglas Roads adjacent to St. Paul's Lutheran Cemetery. The township cemetery was used over the years as a potter's field with the, um, with the earliest burial of, in 1904 and the most recent in 1979. Currently, the cemetery is available for general assistant clients. Um, in the distant past, it was used for burials of indigenous people. A total of 219 people are buried in the cemetery, according to the records. So <laughs> with that said, um, how to contact us? On the screen, I have added um, the Aurora Township where we are located, which again, it's um, 80 North Broadway, our phone number, um, our youth center as well, which is th um, 313 Gill Street, and then our ride in Kane Highway Department information, as well as my email address in case anybody ever has questions, comments, concerns, or has a problem with something, they can definitely reach out to me and I can help them to the best of my ability. That is my current um, presentation. Okay. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I know I learned a whole lot about the concept that I had never <laughs> it even existed prior to this. Thank you very, very much. I know it was a lot of information, but I really hope that helped um, clarify a little bit of what the township is and what it does and its roles. It, it was excellent information, so thank you. <laughs> We're gonna open it up for any questions that should be put in the Q&A section. And yeah. as you're getting ready to write your question, Denise Elsbury, um, be looking at the questions and reading them as they come. But before that, I want to give you a chance to to um, write your questions, and I want to ask a question to Brenda. Uh, Brenda, I think that you have a very interesting sustainability, and I'm wondering if you could talk about what you want to do to enhance sustainability. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You cut off a little bit. Can you repeat your question? Absolutely. I know that you're very interested in sustainability, and I'm wondering if you can tell us what Aurora Township is doing to enhance sustainability within the township. So, to be quite honest, I think that's been one of my biggest struggles is bringing sustainability to the township. Um, a lot of people think that sustainability um, tends to cost a lot of money up front when it comes to um, anything from buildings to um, developments um, and even landscaping. Um, but one of the things that I would like to see in regards to sustainability is um, the youth center, uh, the youth center creating a more sustainable plan so that when we do have to shut down again, um, that we are prepared um, with technology, that we are prepared um, with the infrastructure to make sure that the youth and the community have a place to go um, and we don't have to close our doors um, to them. So that's, that's probably my biggest one that I would say. All right, thank you very, very much. I see there are some questions. I wonder if Denise could read one of them for us, please. I certainly can. Brenda, I'm wondering if you could mute yourself while I read the question so we don't get the feedback. Wonderful. So um, a question came through. Um, there seems to be overlap in what the Aurora Township does and what the city government does. How do you collaborate and work together with the city of Aurora? What is the relationship between the two? And why are Aurora Township services limited to citizens only? 
I, I think I'm reading this meaning like US citizens only. And do you have places to refer them to? Um, there are a couple other questions, but let's start with those and then I'll, I'll we can bring those back up. So go ahead, Brenda. Yeah, so I would say that there is somewhat of an overlap. I think specifically when it comes to our youth services um, and our youth department, um, personally, I would love to see a um, integration between um, the Park District, the, our, the Aurora Township Youth Center, Aurora's um, Youth Center, um, and even uh, a combination with um, the high schools, District 129, District 131, um, I think specifically with um, the violence and the crime rates going up in the city of Aurora and its surrounding areas, I think it's it's really important that we ensure that we're providing um, the equitable resources um, to the youth. And I think that um, we have really good services. The Park District does as well. Aurora, the city of Aurora um, does too. And I think in combination with all, all of us, I think we can touch more people. We can um, expand and um, I engage the community and the youth in, in a different way than what we've been doing um, up to this day. So, so I, I there is somewhat of an overlap. I, I would definitely agree to that. Um, the second, there was a couple of questions to that. Would you be able to ask them again, please? Sure. Um, so it was kind of like, how do you collaborate with the city? And then um, uh, why are townships uh, services limited to citizens only? And do you have places to refer maybe other people to? Yeah, so um, we we do partner with a couple other places. So I know like Family Focus does a great job when we whenever we send people over. Um, our state representative, Barbara Hernandez, does a really great job to share the resources um, that are available. Um, so we do we do partner with a couple other uh, um, places in regards to the services that um, perhaps someone that is not a U.S. citizen needs. Um, there was a, a first question I think I missed. Um, no, I think that that was good. Okay, um, I just want to share my answer and everything. <laughs> so um, here's kind of a different set of questions. Um, what qualifications would be good for an Aurora Township official to have? And um, why did you get involved in the Aurora Township? So uh, um, I would say communication skills, um, creativity, um, passion for um, for what they're doing. Um, I personally got involved. Um, I was never raised in a household where my parents, you know, where where politics was a big thing. Uh, we weren't, we never really talked about it. They didn't really engage us when it came to voting. So it took me, um, I was about 19 when I even like realized that I could vote. <laughs> um, and then I registered to vote. Brenda, we've lost you. Brenda? I kept looking around and I kept um, wondering why, you know, um, people closer to my age range weren't stepping up to the plate. And then um, I finally, a friend of mine finally just said, well, you know, well, like, then well, what are you doing? So then 
um, I, I, I kind of realized that I was kind of the person that I was looking for. <laughs> so I decided to run. I got engaged in my lo in local politics. Um, I got the signatures needed to get on the ballot. I talked to a lot of people in the middle of snowstorms, rain, um, cold, you have it. And I got elected and, and I've learned a lot along the way. And I would love to see um, more younger people get involved. Um, I think it's it's one of those things that people think that it's one way, but when you really get in, like it is a completely different way. Um, so I, that's kind of my story. Awesome. So Debbie, there's an. Um maybe another set of questions. And then if you had any other questions for um, Brenda, but um, there is a question about taxes. Um, and so the, the question is, do residents in unincorporated Aurora Township pay taxes for services slash line items that residents in incorporated Aurora township don't pay or what's the comparison between living in the city or being in the unincorporated areas in terms of the taxes that are paid to the township yeah so um unincorporated unincorporated residents and incorporated residents um both pay to um, taxes um to aurora township however the programs and um, resources that we have at Aurora Township do are are only eligible for Aurora Township residents. So um, you can ask. So that is why um, people in that don't live in Aurora Township are able to vote for residents. I mean, for um, Aurora Township elections. Um, a lot of people also didn't know that. Um, but you, you, if you do live in the city of Aurora within the boundaries, you do pay into Aurora Township, but, um, both incorporated and unincorporated both pay, um, the same in regards to the taxes and get the same with the exception of getting the same services. Denise, is that all the questions you had? Um, there's, one, there's one more, um, and it's kind of about, again, the cooperation between um, the city and the township. So do the township officials meet regularly with the mayor and alder or city council members? Um, as a board, no. Um, personally, I have a really close relationship with um, with aldermen, uh, with specific aldermen in the city of Aurora, as well as my state representative, as well as my county board member, um, as well as some people in the park district. So I I personally um, do interact with all of them and I touch base and, I, and vice versa, we bring ideas and Brenda, I think we lost your sound. Brenda, we lost your sound. I'm sorry, did I get cut off? You're good now. Go for it. Keep going. Oh, that was that was my answer. Sorry, I wasn't sure if like I know I, it seemed like I had a little bit of background noise, so I just like muted myself as soon as my I'm done talking so that I didn't have any background noise. Okay, well Brenda, I have a couple of questions and I think there are more questions coming QA, but I'll ask mine first. One of the great advantages um, to having a township 
is direct access to the people. And there's no layers of bureaucracy to go through. You can have direct access to the people. I consider myself um, fairly informed, but I heard a lot from you tonight that I didn't know before. So how do people learn about all the wonderful services available through the township? So um, some information definitely is on the website. Um, other information um, would be um, to get a hold of the representatives, right? So we're we're all there. I try to do the best I can to to get a hold, um, to um, teach people as much as I can when it comes to what we do and how to better serve you. Um, but definitely the website. Um, I know that with there was a lot of things in the works in regards to. Um, getting the word out a little better. Um, but then COVID hit and then <laughs> everybody, you know, everything kind of went out the window. But that's one of the reasons why I would love to see people more engaged and involved in their local politics. Because as you mentioned, um, you know, we are closer to the people than um, the rest of the governments that are out there. Um, but I would definitely invite you and everybody else to get more involved into your local politics. I, I think that they're one of the most um, that affect us directly. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of a lot of people kind of bypass them and just think of politics on as like the federal level. Thank you. We talked some tonight about the overlap between the city of Aurora and Aurora Township. So I'd like you to use your imagination and think, okay, we don't have a township. What happens to all the services the township provides? Um, I would I would really hope and love that if the city of Aurora with the King County, with King County. Brenda, we've lost you again. Brenda? Disappear. I would hope that um, the city of Aurora would take, oh, oh, can you guys hear me? Okay, I'm showing unstable, so I just wanna make sure. I would hope that the city of Aurora, as well as the county would consume, you know, senior services and the youth services, so that, and general assistance, as well as transportation, because those are services that are really important in our community. Debbie, we had a question, um, and Brenda, in the in the question, uh, the Q and A. If you could give some examples of what general assistance is, is it like cash payments, or what specific, What are some examples of general assistance? So, um, you so meeting the requirements. Um, general assistance is. Um, for those that it's kind of like what it is general assistance need general assistance so um there is a lot of requirements that you that you do need to provide in order to be eligible and then our our um caseworker suli um she verifies everything and then um you, you so the way that it works is i actually have it even in my notes um you would get you once you get approved it takes a little bit to get approved once you get approved then you get assistance for living um you don't get cash payments so for example if you need a place to stay for example for meantime um the township writes a check directly to the landlord instead of you to make sure that you have a place to stay and that um you're not left out on the street um so that's how we kind of cover general assistance is it is it something that's beyond like say paying for rent would uh, um can it be for other services as well so it, so you you would be eligible if you don't um if you're not eligible for any other other federal programs so for example like um a, like a HUD program, um, then you are eligible for general assistance. Like if you're not, if you're not available for any other programs that are available out there, like we're kind of your last resort. 
So if you get food stamps, can you get general assistance from the township? Um, I don't know if that has changed since COVID, but prior to it, um, I believe, yes, you, you could. It wouldn't be food. It would So it would be housing assistance that you're pretty much getting. Um, Brenda, there, um, someone asked for a clarification about um, services for um, incorporated versus unincorporated areas. So do all the residents within the township boundaries receive the same exact services, whether they live in the incorporated area or the unincorporated area? Or is there any difference between the type of services that you might receive depending on where you live? within the township itself yeah if you live if you are an aurora township resident if you live in aurora township then you are available to receive all services that are um, that are there for you um now if you live in the city of aurora then you're not living in aurora township so then you are not eligible for the services that are are that we provide so does that mean like people young like people young people that live in the city of Aurora can't come to the township youth center? It's only if you live in the unincorporated areas, or I think that's the confusion. Yeah. So our services are prioritized to residents that live in Aurora Township. So. If you are, um, if you, that's why, like, if you are a youth that lives, like, for example, in the city, um, chances are Park District is there available for you. If you are a resident that lives in Aurora Township, um, our youth department, our youth center is there for you. That's one of the, the reasons I, um, I personally would like to see a, um, a combination when it comes to our youth center with the park district and the city of Aurora, um, just because the city of Aurora does have um, like their own youth services that they have, and so does the park district. So I think it'd be really beneficial for um, all three to partner up together when it comes to youth services. Does the township have any influence with the city of Aurora? Say, for example, are you sponsoring this? Is needed? Would, would the township have any influence? No, unfortunately. So you collaborate, but you can't influence. I'm sorry, you cut off. You can collaborate with the city of Aurora, but you can't influence. Yeah, um, it's kind of one of those things where everybody just, unfortunately, everybody just stays in their own lane. And in my opinion, that has caused a lot of um, opportunity that has been, that has not been taken up. Denise, I think there's some more questions. Um, so there was. A question came through on um, Facebook that was just asking for a clarification about the about citizenship again. So, um, if you're not a citizen of Aurora or of the United States, does that mean you're ineligible for any of the services from the township? Correct. So currently, the way the language is set up is if you are not a U.S. citizen, then you cannot use, you, you don't qualify for the services such as general assistance or um, now, for example, like right in Kane, um, the question is not asked. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that there's no services out there. Um, when it comes to the youth center um, or senior services, the question is not asked on whether you are um, a U.S. citizen or not. Someone also asked if you could, um, uh, on your PowerPoint, if it's possible to see the boundaries again, that the map that you showed that was, um, that was helpful. Um, and then there was another question, Brenda, about does the township run a food bank? Uh, 
We don't run a food bank. Um, and yes, I can also, I can, um, what I can also do is I can share the PowerPoint presentation with, um, with you guys. I'm not sure if that's something that I can do, but um, that way it can be up for people to see if they want to in their own time. Um, but I can, I, is it okay if I share it again? Uh, Brenda, I will email. Brenda, I will email you the uh, address where you can send it, and it can be posted on the League of Women Voters website. Okay, great. Okay, did everybody hear that? They're going to post it on the League of Women Voters website, so you can all see the map and all the information she gave us. Also, so is uh, again just a clarification about um, services. Is the ride in Kane? only for people who live in the unincorporated areas or is that available to um, residents who live within the city limits also? So our, our Ride and Cane program is currently available to Aurora Township residents. Um, now I know that um, it is in combination with the pay, with PACE. So I know that they do have similar services that are available to all residents, um, except the difference with us is just like the, the price the price difference. Ours, ours is a lot lower than it would be if you go through PACE directly. I think there are a couple more final questions, Denise. Uh, some of them are repeats, so, um, but I'm, I'm looking through to make sure we've gotten most of them, Debbie. I, I think people still need to, even though you said it a couple times, I think people still need to hear the difference between the city and the township. That seems to be a hard time for us to get our minds around that. Yeah, so there's a lot of gray lines in between. Um, the if I should, uh, the map shows it a little clearer. Um, that's why I think it was, it was nice for me to put the visualization there. Um, but the map shows it a little clearer. Now, the city of Aurora, the Aurora Township is within the city of Aurora. Um, we are a separate government. Um, our boundaries are. Um, are a four by four, if you say. <laughs> um, I'll give you um, an example. Um, I personally, so I live in the city, but I represent the township. My backyard is at the township, but one, just 10 feet away, it's the city. So there is a little bit of a great, a lot of great areas there. Um, but if I were, once you see the map, it kind of makes a little more sense. I think also- There was a question, um, Debbie, there was a question here, um, Brenda, about where does the budget for the township come from? Yeah, so the majority of the budget um, for Aurora Township does come from property taxes. So what you're saying is if we look on our property tax bill with the, the listing of all the different um, taxing uh, entities, we would find the township listed under it somewhere on our property tax bill. Um, and so that even though the money is going to the county initially, it comes back to the township eventually, right? Like like the, the county collects all of our tax dollars on our property taxes, but then, but some of that money comes, is allocated towards the township. Is that correct? Correct. You would see a line item for Aurora Township, and then you would see a line item for um, Aurora Township, the road district as well. Well, thank you so very much, Brenda, for sharing your time, sharing your expertise, sharing your knowledge. We all learned an awful lot tonight. Um, I wanna repeat that not only will the video of this evening be on the League of Women Voters website, 
It will also be on the Aurora, Town, Aurora Library website. And then the uh, PowerPoint that Brenda shared will also be on the League of Women Voters website, which is League of Women Voters Aurora area. That's how you find our website. So Krista, thank you again so very much for all of your work. Thank you to the Aurora Public Library for partnering with us. And Brenda, thank you. I know you've had a long day and I really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And I do want to mention that there will be a quick survey that will pop up when you close out if you're on Zoom. So please go ahead and fill that out so we can um, you know, make sure that we're having great programs just like this. And thank you so much to everyone for being here. Good night.